going to be announcing the largest update that we have ever launched for our game, Operation Harsh Doorstop. And if you haven't already picked this game up, keep in mind, you can play this completely for free on Steam. This is a community-made project, and over the last six months, our team has been working hard to address and improve every tiny detail that our community has brought to our attention. And on December 20th, you'll be able to experience all of our hard work completely for free. This update includes some of the most highly requested features that our community has been asking for. This includes a better Steam Workshop integration, allowing you to automatically download and synchronize with modifications on multiplayer servers. But our team has also completed a full overhaul of our entire animation system, bringing us closer to that AAA feel that our community is working towards. This update also includes new weapons, new maps, updates to factions, as well as countless improvements to lighting, environments, and other graphical systems. In this live stream, we're going to be playtesting this update before it launches with everyone who has donated to the project. And if you want to join in on today's free update playtest, you can donate to the project on Steam or you can watch this live stream where I'll be giving away Steam keys to our permanent donator status. Thank you all so much for your support so far, and I can assure you that we're just getting started. Now, let's get into the battlefield. All right, what's up? How you guys doing? That was, uh, I put a lot of effort into that whole intro sequence, so I hope you guys enjoyed this trailer and that whole intro sequence and everything. And today we are currently live and we are playtesting the latest version of Operation Harsh Doorstop that we have been working on for months. Uh, if you are a donator, again, the link is down in the description. If you have donated to the project, uh, then you can download this right now and you can come and play uh, the newest version of Operation Harsh Doorstop before it is released completely for free to everybody in the world to play on December 20th. Uh, so this is going to be live. And keep in mind, so this is a community-made project that we created to give away for free. So yes, everybody who's asking, oh my gosh, is this free? Yes. Our objective was to create a game that was very similar to Insurgency Sandstorm or Squad or games like that, but we wanted to make it completely free so that that way everybody could have a game like this no matter where you're from no matter how much money you have you can play a fully realistic tactical shooter that also has full mod support you know so just like games like arma just like gary's mod not only is this game free not only can you host servers for it but you can also make any type of mods you want for it uh utilizing unreal engine you can create custom game modes custom experiences new weapons new map but in addition to the community doing all of this stuff we ourselves are also continuing to work on this game and improve the base foundation that everybody can build off of and today we're going to be playing that latest version going over a lot of the things that we've added uh and just also answering your all's questions again you know youtube has got this great q a feature and i have also set up check this out Boom, it's almost like I'm a real YouTuber. Uh, so we're going to be having some time just going through, chatting, talking about the game. But we'll go back and forth between playing the actual game and not. Keep in mind, this server right now, if you guys want to join this server, this server is uh, public to everybody who's donated to the project. Just just download the developer build of Operation Harsh Doorstop, and then there's a, just a single server um, in the for the developer build uh, called Official Playtest Server. Come hang out, come play games, uh, and if you guys feel inclined to support the project, you can donate on Steam. And that's it. Let's get into it. Please don't kill me too much on stream, okay, everybody? Um, I'm going to die almost immediately. Uh, so this is the latest map that we are implementing into the game. Keep in mind, this is still a little bit of a work in progress. I mean, obviously, the whole game is a work in progress, but we are still focusing on getting some things optimized and cleaned up. Um, what? 
we're, we're getting we're working on getting some things optimized and cleaned up uh, for the launch on December 20th. So there still might be some FPS hitches here and there. Uh, but again, that's because we're still in the process of you know baking all of the new H slots and getting all of the new optimizations pushed in. Um, but that should be done by the 20th. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things to talk about today. Lots of questions to answer, and hopefully you guys will enjoy this new map that we've created. Uh, just to give you kind of an overview. In fact, I can go ahead and just uh, <laughs> use my dev hacks here to kind of give you an overview of this map. Um, so from this point onwards, obviously when Operation Harsh Doorstop first released, our objective was just to get, you know, an initial prototype out the door so we could start working with the community to improve it. We don't have all of the features, you know, yet. We're still building a lot of uh, features. So, you know, we hadn't really focused on creating big scale maps. From this point onwards, what we're focusing on doing is all of our maps from this point on <laughs> let me join a squad while I'm at it um, and then I'm just going to cower in the base here so all of our maps from this point on are going to support vehicles because obviously one of the next features that we're going to be implementing after this patch is we're actually going to be implementing vehicles. In fact, uh, we already have a prototype for vehicles that we're going to be testing when this update comes out. I don't know if you guys have been watching, but I've already uploaded a number of videos where we did public play tests with vehicles. Um, so we are going to be testing vehicles after this new update launches, which is why we wanted to make sure that every single one of of our primary maps uh, can support vehicles. So as you can see, this map has an entire airfield that we've created here. Um, so that way, uh, when we do do the vehicle play tests, this will be able to support vehicles. It has an entire runway. It has support. You know, if people start testing helicopters or other other things, it's all here. Uh, so all of our maps are going to have full support for that. This particular map, I don't know if you guys have actually noticed this, but this particular map is actually um, inspired by one of my favorite maps from Project Reality. I don't know if you guys can guess which one, um, but that is the Ramiel map from Project Reality. If you guys remember the Delta Force um, map, so we're still in the process of kind of fleshing this all out, but we think that this is going to make a perfect map uh, for our future insurgency game mode, uh, where you'll have to go through and hunt weapon caches, and you know, you'll have vehicles where you have like Humvees and stuff like that that you'll have to go through. Uh, game Dev Chris, will weapon customization be a feature? Yes. So as as a lot of people maybe may or may not be aware, uh, we have a priority system. So you can actually go to our public game development roadmap and you can see which things we want to focus on first and which things we want to focus on last. Weapon customization is kind of like right there in the middle. We have a plan for weapon customization. Uh, we do want to do it, but obviously we think that vehicles and other more important features should come first. Uh, when is the nuke update? I don't know. Um, people are asking when the vehicles are coming. Um, we're hoping that the vehicles are going to be coming the update after this one. So the, after this update, we're going to spend a couple of months really focusing on optimization really focusing on cleanup and then in 20 early 2024 is where is when our whole team is going to start focusing exclusively on two big things uh, which is vehicles and construction so we want to be able to get in the construction system so you can build fobs deploy rally points stuff like that and then we want to get in the vehicle system and then when those two things are done the next big thing that we need to work on is the medical system uh, so being able to revive players being being able to you know stop bleeding stuff like that and that's what we're going to be doing um so yeah all right so let's actually get into this match i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to join one of these squads i guess one of the smaller ones warrior are you are you actually there all right let's get through and let's actually just let's win a match why don't we let's put a match in the new version of ohd Who's this? Oh, Warrior. Hey, what's up? You got your nice little sniper rifle there. Uh, this is actually one of the new weapons that we're adding to the game. Um, Warrior's been going through adding in all sorts of different weapons. What are all the weapons that you've added to the game, Warrior? You, you've added a lot. You want to go through all of them? Uh, PPSH. PPSH. Paper. Um, we added an accurate version of the M4A1. We launcher. Some uh, early war stuff like the MP18. Germans. 
uh, revolver. We did add in. Americans, so we can, people want to make mods. With yeah, that's true. We did. We did added in not just the MP18, which is a submachine gun for the World War One faction, but we also added in a, a new system to support revolver weapons. We have two revolvers in that are in the game now, right? We have the World War One one, and then we have the more modern one. That's correct. Yep. All right, cool. So lots of stuff. That's not even all of the weapons we've been adding. So lots of stuff to play around with. And of course, I'm instantly going to get killed. Uh, is this like Battlefield, but more realistic? Yes, that's exactly what this is. So our objective is to eventually get to a point. So um, I'm not a big fan of what Squad has done with the whole ICO thing. Um, I think it's fine. They're allowed to do it. It's their game. Uh, but I don't think that our game is going to be going in that direction. Our game is going to be more like, I, I guess, what Squad used to be. Um, I, I was going to say, like, kind of a cross between Squad and Battlefield, but that's kind of what Squad was. Um, but that's our main objective, is we really want to focus on kind of like that, more like, uh, more realistic than Battlefield, um, kind of, uh, vibe. Um, not full-blown tactical, not like full-blown armor, um, but realistic enough especially with modifications so that way if you want to make it more realistic and play more realistically you can but if you also want to just play casually you can do that as well any idea if you guys are going to look over the ai in the future we have already this update is actually going to include a pretty massive update to the ai um tactics um and you'll actually notice a lot of differences in how the in the in how the ai behave and how they work in this update. Alright, so let's go. Alright, so we've got a lot of players on now. So this is going to suddenly probably get much more difficult. So let's uh, let's play mindfully. Lucas, Blue Drake, I am a student trying to be a game dev and I love Operation Harsh Doorstop. I wanted to try and make a mod for it and was wondering if you could allow people to sell mods. Any plans allowing server-side archive? So, yes, um, one thing that we want to do is with Operation Harsh Doorstop, we're going to be completely open with people creating servers and accepting donations and basically any way that you could monetize a Gary's Mod or an Arma server, we intend to fully allow. So if you want to set up a server and you want to accept donations in order to give your donating members you know, whatever you want, we're going to be completely open regarding that. Um, so you can do whatever you want on that front. In fact, I think that's something that's going to give us a pretty big, uh, a, a pretty big selling point over other games like Squad, because in Squad you cannot do that at all. Um, but our objective is to build kind of like a really open community, so you can build whatever you want, however you want, and then you can build your community and support yourself how you want. Bo Bosnian says, selling mods, Bethesda tried that and everyone hated that. Uh, so again, I'm not talking about selling mods, um, although we're not going to restrict you from doing that if you want. Um, if you look at Minecraft, if you look at Gary's mod, if you look at Arma, there are loads of mods, and I mean loads of mods, being sold for Gary's mod. There's loads of mods being sold for Arma, pri usually server side mods. So like you know, you know, you spend fifteen dollars and you get some kind of. So I know that Bethesda doing the whole Skyrim thing is like, oh, everybody hated that. But I, I, I think people forget that the five M community, the the Gary's mod community, and the Arma community, as well as many others, have pretty massive paid mod economies, like massive paid mod economies that is that is not something that's new and it's and people definitely do not hate that uh, i think what people are mad is um what people are upset about is when you try to sell mods as dlc on the steam store page which we're not going to do server monetization equals screwing mod creators uh not necessarily um if you're a mod creator just don't upload your mod in a place where people can um monetize it just host your own server and have it so your modification is exclusive to your server, which you can totally do. Sorry, I'm distracted by chat. Oh, but it's the end of the round anyways. Alright, let's see what else we got. In fact, actually, we can switch over while we wait. Alright, um, let's see what other questions we have going on. Uh, Alexander, thank you for the server chat. Um, James, Lucas... 
Uh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, I need to go through and see what all the super chats actually were. Uh, is this game going to be on console at all? Uh, it's eventually, we would like to get it on console. Any new updates for existing features and maps? I don't know what that question means. There are new updates for... I, I guess go to the beginning of the video. Can you customize a map for me and my friends? Um, you can customize a map for yourself. Uh, as far as the... By the way, so the questions regarding the lawsuit towards that one guy, uh, I'm not going to talk anything about that currently. All I can say is that there will be there will be a pretty big announcement regarding that in the near future. So, But I'm not going to go over that publicly right now for legal reasons. It'll be fun, though. All right. Here we go. Uh, implementing support for bipods and actual functional bipods is actually going to be one of the first things that we start working on immediately after launching this update. You'll actually notice there is a lot of new functionality for the weapon. So, again, uh, one of the things that people have been asking about is, okay, uh, how do I stop my weapon from clipping through the wall? Because in the previous version of Operation Harsh Tour Stop, the animation system, if you walked into a wall... Um, oh, yo, Big Fry! Oh, my God, he used the Star Citizen joke! Oh, dude, that... I feel like Big Fry... That's that, that that's love right there. When Big Fry comes onto my stream and uses my own really bad jokes on me that's if that's not love man i don't know what that was that's that's my love language um so here's a bunch of things that we've added to the game that people have been asking for one of the big things that we've added to the game that people have been asking for is world collision with weapons and again this is just one feature and a whole bunch of things that i will go over much more thoroughly on december 20th uh but as you can see i walk up to this wall when you walk up to the wall, the weapon will push back, um, and that is only if you just get kind of close to the wall. But if you go all the way up, it'll actually switch to a low ready position. And I actually really like this solution, because I know that there's some games, like, if you get even slightly close to a wall, your entire gun just goes like, Bruh! you know, like, we didn't want that. We wanted this to be very passive, very clean, uh, so right now you walk up to an environment, and if it's and this also actually collides with other players so you can see this guy so if you get up on another player you can kind of like low ready behind him stack up you know on doorways and stuff like that um but this is something that we think was implemented in a very kind of um light way uh so it's not going to be jarring and it's not going to get in the way of playing the game but it is going to help with the realism and also help with the immersion factor where, where your gun isn't just like straight up clipping through the entire wall you know so that is one thing and there is a development roadmap uh you can find it if you go onto the discord server um in fact if somebody wants to list that in chat you can um, so that is one of the things that we've added. Another thing that we have added, again, uh, by the way, I just want to give a shout out. Uh, a lot of these animation features. Um, oh, uh, Fred asks, what about squad spawning? That is one of the main things that we're actually going to be working on immediately after this. We already have a number of prototypes for squad spawning. Um, and we're actually going to be publicly testing those after this. But those are not ready to be put into the base game yet. But they will here pretty soon. Um, so... Uh, one of the things that has been added, and again, a lot of these animation things have actually been done, uh, by the lead animator, um, for, uh, Beautiful Light. I almost said Blinding Light, I don't know why. Um, so if you guys have been following, uh, the development of Beautiful Light, the lead animator for Beautiful Light has actually been working on our weapons. And when I say that, I actually mean our animator has been working for Beautiful Light. Because I had you first, Mike. I hired you first, okay? So, and then actually, I, to be fair, I am very happy with how all of that worked out. Because uh, the fact that he's able to work with Beautiful Light instead of one of the other studios that was trying to hire him means that he can still stay local and work on Operation Harsh Doorstop. So we kind of coordinated all of that so that way he could support himself and still work on OHD. But he's been doing really, really great work. Um, so all of these animation things, when I show this off, uh, I, we are... Beautiful Light OHD Bundle is totally, was totally part of that negotiation. So yes, that's gonna happen. I was like, I was like, hey, Beautiful Light, I will share my developers if you do, if you do a bundle with... But Big Fry, I know you're memeing, but that 100% that happened. Um, so anyways... 
Uh, so here's another thing that's been added. Again, lots of tiny little immersion aspects. Uh, but now we have all sorts of different animations for when you switch stances. One of the more obvious of which is going into prone. So now you can't just instantly go into prone anymore. You have all of these tiny little details where when you prone, you know, your arm will go down. You have these crawling animations. You also have slight changes uh, between crouching and standing. Um, and all of these things also happen in ADS as well. I mean, except for uh, prone. This does look like Warfare. I mean, to be fair, Warfare 1944 was also set in a similar time period although this is um this is more of a this i guess that was world war ii this is world war one um so yeah so those are all things uh lots lots of tiny little details like that have been added to the game let me join a squad here so i can a different squad unlock some of these all right no i guess not so those are lots of little details that have been added to the game, including the the vaulting system. So I not a lot. I know a lot of people were complaining about the vaulting system in the old version of the game. Uh, so now when you vault, uh, we've put a lot of work into making it cleaner, more responsive, just kind of quick. Um, so you can just quickly vault over any obstacle um, or mantle onto small obstacles. Uh, one of the next things we're going to be working on is we're going to be creating kind of like a higher mantling. Like right now you can't mantle over this, but here soon you will be able to. Um, but you can mantle onto these. So eventually we're going to be implementing uh, high mantling. All right, let's see. What are we doing? Where's our? What's our tickets at? All right, 84. Let's finish this match, and then we can move on to the next map. Make map editing more user-friendly. Um, well, so the thing is, is Unreal Engine... I, I don't know if I could say that Unreal Engine is necessarily user-friendly, but Unreal Engine, I mean, is, is pretty much a standard when it comes to map making. Um, there, there will be a time where we will probably add a in-game map editor, um, but again, that will probably be restricted to doing things like what you can do with Arma. So in Arma, it's like you can't, you can edit a map in game by adding new weapon or like adding new units and maybe adding in some like extra, um, you know, buildings and stuff. But you can't edit like the base map all itself. Uh, it's gonna be same like that as well. So right now, oh, you mother. It is so hard to play games and talk to chat at the same time. All right, I'm not gonna answer any questions. I'm gonna focus on 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 being a good boy. All right, let's see here. Where's my freaking squad? All right, let's uh, let's take these let's take these points. What do we got here? All right, so we're gonna take hillside. I'm focusing on hillside. Um, this is actually one of the new uh, modes that we've added to the game as well. Uh, so. We're, we're in the process of actually adding a whole bunch of new modes to the game. Uh, eventually, we're going to do a complete overhaul of the game mode system. And we're going to be adding in not just new modes, but also uh, a lot of additional, more fundamental support. So that modders can more easily add in their own custom game modes. Um, and this is kind of the beginning of that. Uh, right now, we're going to have two modes. We're going to have a skirmish mode. And a skirmish mode, which is what we're playing right now, is kind of more of your traditional battlefield mode and and this is only going to be available on our smaller maps so as you guys know when we first launched the game we had a bunch of very small maps that were kind of more for play, play testing and like an art test we were actually going to get rid of them entirely but the community said that they really really liked them they wanted them to stay so we thought we'd leave them in the game but then use them as kind of a premiere for one of our new game modes which is just a skirmish game mode you got two teams you got all these capture points that you can grab freely um just kind of like a battlefield game mode the other game mode that we have which is now going to be on our large scale maps which are all going to be created going forward that support vehicles uh that's going to be advanced and secure which is more of like your traditional um squad style gameplay uh, but as time goes on, we're going to be adding even more game modes. Insurgency, fleshing out advanced and secure with, you know, stuff like constructing bases and vehicles, all stuff like that. All right, let's see here. All right, let's take this Let's take this objective here. All right, rush this objective. Let's go! Rock and roll. All right, hillside. Almost got a full server going on here. All right, this is ours. All right. 
Let's rush, rush the, uh, rush the, the woods, the forest, the forest, go for the forest. Go, 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 go. You, I see you, I see you. No. Boom, you're gone. Goner. Alright, woods. Woods, 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 woods. Go, 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 go. Let's rock, let's rock, let's rock. Alright, on the objective. Let's go, guys. I have one magazine left. And, of course, I just got killed. What the fuck? Yep. <laughs> Is this the new Fortnite season? Yes. Yes, it is. Ooh, what's this? A BAR? I'll take that for sure. Ah. You also know all of the reload animations now have more momentum with the camera. So lots of little details that just feel significantly better. All right, we are still winning, but just barely. All right, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Also, little animations like jumping and falling. So you notice when I fall, the weapon will go... Kachunk. So lots of little details like that. Lots of little details. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Why am I so bad at games? That's fine. It's because I'm old. It's because I'm old and dying, that's why. I'm in my 30s now. GTA 9. Can't wait for the advanced and secure update. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's going to be one of the next things that we're going to be working on is adding in vehicles. Itch. Adding in vehicles and adding in um, construction, so that way we can have. Uh, You bitch. Is there a way to force more people to use mics? Um, I would say more people are going to inevitably use mics as time goes on. Um, because as we add in more mechanics that incentivize team play, uh, which, you know, right now we don't have as many. Um, but as time goes on, especially with the modifications that and, and the prototypes that we're going to be playtesting when we launch the new version of the game, um, I think you're going to naturally see a lot more communication. I don't think that's something that we can force people to do. This uh, Is this game going to be well optimized? Look, so I'm going to be honest. This game is not made for weak... It, this game is not made for weak PCs. This is not a weak PC game. Now, it's not a strong PC game either. This is not a game that we're going to be focusing on um, making like, you know, like, like, you know, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it's not going to be like, oh, man, RTX and photorealism or thing. This is going to be roughly the same requirements as Squad and Sandstorm. If you cannot run Squad and you cannot run Sandstorm, you will not be able to run this game. And I do not see, I do not see us changing that mentality ever ever um so I, I see a lot of people complaining about that and it's like well i can't i can't run this game and then i'm like well what are you what are you using and they're like well i have a chromebook and i'm like yeah that's yeah no i'm sorry i mean you can maybe play battle bit but some of the people i see complaining about these things also can't run battle bit and like if you can't run battle bit my dude i'm i don't know what to do for you all right let's get over here all right. What's our... Oh my gosh, we're losing? I don't want to lose. My KD is just trash, I guarantee it. Thanks, Razer. Are you going to be adding more realistic weapon sounds? I mean, eventually, but I'm going to be honest. I think the weapon sounds we have in the game right now are pretty good. Um, I, I see a lot of people complain about the weapon sounds. I'm going to be honest, man. I've been listening to other games and ours. Our game is by far not the worst sounding game out there. 
I'm not gonna say it's the best sounding game, but for a completely free tactical shooter, asking for more than what we currently have, not saying that we aren't gonna continue improving it, but I would say asking for more than this is, you gotta have some pretty realistic ex expectations. Any plans for a modding platform outside Steam? I don't know what you mean. A way for the studio to profit and reinvest in the game is to allow modders to monetize their mods in the platform. Well, we have no intention of monetizing modifications within Steam. Um, we are in talks with the same mod, um, with the same monetization framework that powers 5M. So if any of you guys work with 5M servers or you monetize 5M servers, you'll know that there's a system that they use to allow that. Not that you have to use it, you could still use a different system, but obviously utilizing the natively supported system is, is easier. Uh, we're in talks with that exact same company to eventually implement that for OHD. So that will be an option at some point. All right, we're definitely not playing this again. Um, and I just said that wrong. There we go. All right, let's play some Rosala. Remember me, I had suggested trying Roblox Blackhawk Rescue Mission 5. Sure, I remember you, dude. All right, let's rock. Any plans to upgrade the game to engine to Unreal Engine 5? Yes, we will be we will be moving to Unreal Engine 5. All right, I'm just going to create a squad. All right, squad created. I'm going to be I'm going to be tryharding. I'm going to be focused on the game and then after this we'll do a, a let's chat where I can just focus on the questions. Focus on the QA. You guys will also notice there's a pretty big difference when it comes to the lighting and just the general graphical fidelity. Uh, we have been doing a lot, a lot, um, to improve the lighting systems. Talking to stu talking to people who previously worked on big studios, what they did um, for their lighting systems. That is something that's been a big focus for us. Motherfucker. That didn't work out very well. All right, let's see here. Thank you, James. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Commodore, I hear you on wanting to focus on the medical system, but currently we take votes uh, from the community internally, and the community has voted that they want vehicles next, so that's what we're doing. Don't get me wrong, I would love to do the medical system, but I totally... I, I would say vehicles in the medical system are roughly equal when it comes to how critical they are. I would actually say the vehicle system is maybe a little bit more important because the vehicle system can facilitate aspects of the medical system. You know, for instance, like logistics and stuff like that. You know, being able to resupply your medical bag off of logistics and whatnot. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and work on vehicles first. All right, let's get in here. All right, let's uh, let's try hard, please. The gameplay needs a rework before you add more stuff like vehicles. Uh, well, we have already we have just finished a rework to the gameplay. So if you do not like the gameplay in this new version of the game, then I'm sorry. I think I think at that point we're just gonna straight up disagree and we're moving forward with vehicles anyways. We, we have spent a lot of time reworking the gameplay, and I mean, I don't think anybody could argue at this point that we have not spent a significant amount of time fine-tuning the gameplay. There is a certain point that you just need to cut it and move on, and I, I think we are easily at that point. We have we have done everything. I mean, some, some people are just never going to be happy, and that's fine. Like, some people are just never going to be happy. I could sit here and spend 50 years working on tweaking the gameplay, and nobody will ever... Nobody will ever be happy. All right, cool. Understood. All right, let's go. We got this. Let's hit the next objective. All right, I'm just going to get some smoke up. It's funny. I've been fighting against bots for so long that I've kind of like... I'm kind of used to fighting against the enemy as if they're bots. But now we have lots of players on here, and I'm just like, oh, crap. They're not bots anymore. Here we go. Like him. Alright, 
we got a lot of ground to cover. We got to push up here, but they they can only spawn up here, so we're good. So let's take this slow, push up hard. Here we go. Yes, this is on dev build for anybody that's asking. One of the next things that I want to add is um, the ability to hold to press shift and toggle zoom. But you'll notice even when I'm prone, the weapon will collide with the wall, which I enjoy now. Do I hear? I hear bad guys. You'll also see that the interiors have gotten a complete rework. I actually, my, I myself uh, worked on a bunch of these. In my final year in school, any chance on me working on Trickling Labs as an intern? Um, sure, if you want, and you have something that can, you can contribute, we're more, more than happy to have anybody who wants to help come and help. Um, but you'll notice that all of the interiors have gotten a pretty big um, rework. Again, I mean, by no means are we 100% done, but I think compared to the previous version of the game, this is going to be a significant improvement for people, um, where there's just a lot more detail, there's a lot more things. The assets are considerably more clean and and high high definition motherfucker i'm sitting here doing a dev blog um so that's that's also something that you're going to see every single time i start showing off the game is when i die oh and if you take a look at this <laughs> every time yeah was that you dick you better not be stream sniping me gooms i swear to fucking god But yeah, all of this is going to be in the next update. Um, I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy this. Obviously, one of the biggest things that we've added is the native synchronization for multiplayer uh, modifications. I think that's probably going to be one of the biggest things um, that people are going to see that's a pretty huge difference. Um, so, you know, if there's anything that you don't like about this game, you'll now be able to create a multiplayer server and you can modify any aspect of it. And when people join your server, they will automatically download all of those changes. Joe Stafford, thanks for the buck, dude. Alright, let's push up. Do I need to download the Unreal Engine to use the SDK? Uh, well, our SDK includes a copy of Unreal Engine, so you don't have. It's not like you have to download Unreal Engine and then download our SDK. Just download our SDK. Our SDK is literally a version of Unreal Engine, so you can download our SDK and work with it just like you're utilizing, you know, any standard Unreal Engine copy. How about grenades? Is it still two animations? Uh, I believe we polished that up. There's, I know that there's still an issue with it. Uh, there's a little bit of a glitch. Um, we don't know what's causing this. But if you notice, there's that tiny little glitch. We haven't fixed that yet. Um, but as far as I'm aware, the, the whole two grenade issue has been mostly fixed. Other than that little glitch thing that we're trying to fix. But we figured that that was such a small issue that we're just not going to worry about it for now. 
Have you managed to test environment destruction? Uh, yes, I did a whole video showing off the environment destruction system. Um, environment destruction is a system that we have planned. It is a system that I have showed off a proof of concept for, but is a system where I would need a significant number of additional donators, and I mean a significant number, in order to fully implement. Um, so, because that's the thing, right, guys? Like, we have this game, we're going to make this game. We have the capacity, we have the people, I have the resources, the human resources anyways, to add in all of these things that I've shown. Um, but it's it's really up to the community and, and how much they believe in us uh, that's going to restrict what we're able to do. So, like, you know, again, you know, you look at Burning Lands... Burning Lands just raised, I mean, they raised it and then they lost it, but they were on track to raise like $200,000. You know, if we had gotten that money, vehicles would have been done by now. We'd probably already be started working on destruction. Um, there's other studios out there that, I mean, some of these studios, I mean, you look at uh, the day before. The day before is probably raking it in right now. Even with the negative reviews and everything, they are sucking money out of the industry um and if but if but if that's what people if that's what people put their money towards i can't stop it. we're in a situation right now where we have proven to everyone that we have a team right here right now that has the knowledge and the capability to build a completely free first person shooter almost identical to something like squad or identical to insurgency sandstorm or identical to like a battlefield game uh for free we have the we have the ability to do it right now um and the reason we're able to do it for free is because people donate to our project uh and there's some people who are just like ah, i don't want to donate i just want to get it for free and it's like okay well that's fine if we get x number of donators we can do x number of things if we can get Y number of donators, we can do Y number of things. So it really is just up to the community. Like it's 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 up to you all. It's up like I'm I'm showing you a, a I've been working on this game for years with our whole team now, and I have shown you from the beginning what our game looked like from the very beginning, how much money we got, and what our game looks like now with the number of supporters we've received. The number of supporters that we have right now is still like a drop in the bucket. A drop in the bucket compared i mean i think i think we've made this entire game now f from like an average of 400 patreon supporters 400 people 400 people we've had 400 patreon supporters and we've made all of this I, imagine if we had a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand like I, I there's people on patreon that make fucking comic books that have twenty thousand patreon supporters i don't know where all that money goes because like I don't think, I don't think it costs, I mean, it, like, if you, if you got a $5 subscription as your base subscription, you got 20,000 support, that's like $100,000 a month. I mean, more power to them. I mean, I'm not against anybody making a lot of money, but, um, but yeah, like, you've got a lot of people out there pouring money towards projects that, that don't take that amount of money to make, like, they just don't. Um, and then you have people like us, and we're making this game for free, and we're making this off of a budget that's, like, insanely small. But I think what that shows is that shows how efficient we are with our money. You know, like, you've got, you've got studios out there blowing $5 million making, making a game that's barely even a quarter of what we've created here, and somehow getting away with it. Um, imagine if we, imagine if a studio like us actually had that kind of money and actually got those kinds of donations that some of those other studios that make nothing make um we would be able to do insane things um but i think the only way that that's going to happen is if we just continue just putting our money where our mouth is we're sitting here making this game and hopefully the more people that see what we're doing and, and see the progress that we're making with the very small amount of resources that we have the more people are going to be like yeah these guys deserve more resources but you know that that's going to be the main limiting factor so if you guys want full-blown battlefield style destruction Battlefield probably implemented their destruction system for like twenty million dollars. I would, I, I feel like, I, I mean, I'm ballparking here. I, I don't know for sure, but just based off of my experience, I feel like it took twenty million dollars for Battlefield to do that. I think it would be possible for us to do it for a million or less, probably way less actually. But I'd have to talk to the rest of the team. Um, but we know that it's possible, and we know how to do it. Um, but yeah. 
We have probably made this entire game so far for a budget of maybe somewhere between 300000 to 500000 Somewhere in that range. Um, like, if you were to take into consideration, like, our whole... Because we've been operating... We make around 100000 a year, roughly. All of us combined. Not any single person. But we we split probably like a hundred thousand between like ten people, which means on average each of us get like a thousand a month, which is like try living off a thousand a month. <laughs> you know? um, and we've been operating for about five years, five six years in full in full capacity. So you can do a one time donation, yeah. Uh, that's why we have Steam. In fact, we get most of our donations through Steam now. So yeah, that's the best place to do a one time donation. All right, let's see here. We're actually making progress. Oh, we took this mat. We took this flag. I obviously contributed nothing to taking this flag, so. Uh, why did you remove the development build for people who paid on Patreon? Uh, I have not. I have definitely not. So if that has happened to you, something is wrong. And you need to check your Steam account. Do you have plans on bringing the game to consoles? I answer that question quite a bit. Um, again, consoles is a big milestone. We would need we would need a lot more supporters for us to get to console, but it's it's possible. It's possible. Thank you, Gideon, for the donation, my man. After this match, we'll just do kind of like a like a sit down and we'll just talk. There must be a sniper or something up there. Oh, is that the first donation you've ever made? It's telling me that's the first donation you've ever made, Gideon. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Are the vehicles and gun modding... Wait, so gun gun modding is already... Unless you're talking about weapon customization. Uh, you can mod in guns. But yes, those are all coming. Please show us all the new weapons. Yeah, I can show you all the new weapons. Let's actually do that. I'll rejoin this match. Alright, so we'll go to the training grounds and we'll take a look at all the new weapons. And keep in mind, uh, this is launching publicly December 20th. The update is not live. The update is launching December 20th. Alright, so let's take a look at all the weapons we got. Uh, we do have a couple of weapons that are just not really being utilized right now, um, but they will be at some point. So we got weapons like this, AS Val. Um, that was already in the game. Um, I I I'll be honest, my dream is to eventually get in all of the weapons that I want, and then eventually I'm going to make like a Stalker-esque mod, um, and then there's going to be all of these weapons in here uh, that we can just have be loot and stuff in my Stalker mod. Um, but yeah. All right, but let's start with this. Uh, so we've got the PPSH in the game. So here's the PPSH. And this will be a fun weapon because I think we can utilize this for like World War II uh, when we, if we do a Russian faction and we can also use it for insurgents and stuff like that. So that'll be fun. We have added in this P-38 Luger um, because this is something that I believe... Um, or was it a P-38 or was this... Wait, hold up. It might have been a different one. I know that there's a new handgun. I'm not entirely sure. Well, here's a P-38 Luger. But I know that there was a new uh, handgun that we added in for uh, either World War One or World War II. Because um, I know Warrior mentioned it specifically. We have the MP-443 Grok. We have the STG-44.
Hey, thank you for the donation, Phobia. Uh, I will tell Coombs that he's your crush. 100%. Alright, moving on. This is the Op 4 side. We have the MP18. And this is a World War One submachine gun. So this will make World War One a little bit more interesting. We have the DP-28. Kind of a more Vietnam-era weapon, although it was also used during World War II, as far as I'm aware. We have a TT-33. Oh, the Mauser 1914, I think, is the one that everybody's talking about. We have the Mauser 1914, which I believe this was... Yeah. This was the handgun that I think was added. So a little bit more of an anti-immersion breaker there. Uh, we have fixed the issues with the SKS, which is nice. Um, we still have the AK Warfighter, and we have this revolver. So this is one of the new revolvers, although we don't have new sounds for this yet. So this is still using the old sounds, but... Eh. So this is um, in the World War One faction. Alright, we can take a look at the Blue Four Forces. So we have, I can't remember, I think the M16A1. So we have, uh, I can't remember if this is new or not. One of the M16A1s, I believe, was redone. But I can't remember. There's a bunch of these that are just new models. I can't remember. I know that the M4A1, this is a new one. We have the Glock 19 Afterburner. So this is kind of like a modded version of the Glock, or like just an alternate version of the Glock. Thank you so much, Bear. Appreciate it. My dream goal for the game, you know what, we'll, we'll talk about that when we go to the chat um, segment. Uh, we have the Triarch 2011. Again, a lot of these have been implemented, but we haven't put in new sounds yet, so those will, that'll come in time. But right now we're just trying to get the weapons in, and then we can make them cool and unique and perfect later, but right now I just want them in. Um, we have a new version of the HK-417. Um, you know, again, all of these different variations of the existing weapon is kind of just placeholder until we get in a proper weapon customization system. But we figured people would have appreciate having this in the interim anyways. You want to see a well rod? No well rod yet. Um, we have an XM-177. This is for the Vietnam forces. Kind of like a previous version of the AR. We have another revolver. I think this is the same revolver? Possibly. Don't think so. Different revolver. Hold on. Let me, let me double check that. No, revolver 45 and that's a revolver 38. And then we have this uh, silenced pistol. Again, silenced weapons may or may not be a part of an upcoming thing that I personally have planned. So we'll see about that. We have this. So this is one of the more fan favorite ones. The Barrett M82. That'll be fun. We also have the Endeavor. Which also has a backup site. The 
G36. Again, this weapon hasn't really been implemented in any official faction yet. It's just kind of in for now, um, in preparation for some of our future plans. Also have a more modernized version of the M4A1. Again, same dealio there. Kind of more in, in preparation for some of our future plans. And as an interim until we get weapon customization. We have a more modern uh, revolver. And last but not least, we have this M16A1 with an optic, which is going to be utilized in the Vietnam missions. Is there a P90? Not yet. So that is everything. Those are all the new weapons. Let me get back into the server. The revolver should be named the Wrist Breaker 2000. Very possible. Um, yeah, more AI improvements are going to be coming in the future. All right. Let us take this. And somebody stole that from me. Damn. All right, here we go. Uh, the revolvers aren't really a big aspect of the game right now, so we haven't really gone too far into, like, you know, making custom sounds or mechanics for them. Um, but at some point, we would like to go further into that. But again, right now, our main objective is just to get the things that we need in and then refine the gameplay. Thank you so much for the donation, Jason. I appreciate it. All right, let's uh, try not to die here. How do you use a backup site? Uh, that should be a keybind that you can bind. Thank you for shooting me in the face. Nailed it. Did I actually kill that guy? I want to say probably not. It's not a bad place to be, though. Let's see, they're going to be spawning across here, so this is going to be a kill zone. This whole area here is probably going to be easy pickings. Possibly, allegedly. Have you heard of Ready or Not getting that reviving? Interesting. I see one. Open fire. Uh, I don't know. I don't think there's any issue with aim, aim down sights. Um, possibly that's something that we fixed up. I don't remember that being broken though. I don't see him anymore. Did you get him? definitely a player there. Oh, receiving a major update for 1.0. Yeah, I have heard. I, I guess they are going out of 1.0. That is a rocket launcher. But now it's a dead rocket launcher. that endeavor right now. What's my KD at? Hey, 3-0. Look at that. Pro gamer. I guess leaving and rejoining reset my KD. Thank God. That guy's running for the RPG. That's not good. Oh! Somebody smacked me. 
Arma 3 Ace Healing would be awesome. That's something we would like to do eventually. Ah! I knew it. I knew that's why he got the goddamn RPG. If you pick up weapons from the ground, do you still need to reload it um, before use? No, that should be something that should have been fixed. That's been fixed for a while, actually. That could be fixed in the public build, but I'm not sure. Any air support plans? Yeah, we would like to have that eventually. Here, just cross cross the road. Cross the road, get to the objective. Let them shoot at the bots. Did you include any artillery support? Um, there are artillery support that's uh, being tested currently. Sorry. Okay, we're in cap here. All right, hold here. Hold that doorway. Somebody's reloading. We got enemy contact. Keep them at bay. I heard that. No? Oh, hi, Steve, motherfucker. Ah, balls. We are in cap. Oh, there we go. Ah! That's a lot of bad guys, though. Let me try to get to a better position here. Do you have any plan on bringing free candy van to OHD? Uh, possibly. I mean, I'm going to be hosting a server for OHD. Um, the question is what we're going to call it. I don't know if we need to call it free candy van. But I will host a server. Oh, God. Who is shooting me? And how? Will there ever be head bobbing slider in OHD? Um, possibly. I don't. We don't really have any head bobbing right now, though. So there's no there's no reason to have a head bobber slider when there is no head bob. I've never been a fan of just kind of like over the top head bob. Yeah, eventually we're going to be completely redoing kind of like the way that you deploy um, ammo and stuff like that. Yes! <laughs> I get wrecked. I got that guy up in the window. Uh, 
Alright, I'll place them. Alright, well, watch to the, to the right. Contact. Whatever. Did you get him? If you had a contact, yeah, he's yeah. dead. No, I killed him. Woo! That almost ended badly. He's up top. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Bitch! Ah! Are you guys working, planning on working on the stance animations, the transition? Yes, yes. We, we just finished a full animation pass of the stance animations. Which I showed previously. You have an XP leveling system. Um, eventually, we'll probably have some kind of leveling system where you can, um, you know, progress in some way. But you know, we're never gonna have like microtransactions or battle passes or anything like that. So, any like XP or leveling system will be purely for the fun aspect. Uh, a number of us use Autodesk, yeah. Not all of us. Oh, somebody behind me. That's a shame. Let's see, how are we doing? We're actually doing decent. I actually do enjoy the balance on the new f the new ticket balance. I actually think is working pretty well. Take care, Bonjarno. Thanks for coming to the stream. Will the advanced and secure game mode with vehicles have? Full bot support. Uh, y well, yeah. Eventually, we'll we'll have um, functionality for bots to utilize vehicles. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Did I get him? Did I kill him? I think I got him. Guess we're about to find out, aren't we? Yeah, boom. Get wrecked. Get wrecked, kid. A lot of guys there. 
I think if there was ever a time for a UGL, it is now. Yes. Oh, how did that not kill you? How did that not kill that guy? Take care, Savannah. All right, we are not doing good, fellas. All right, let's see here. How many players each side? Alright, I want to capture this next objective. Let's do this. I've killed too many of these guys. He could have killed me right then. somebody makes a drift car mod. That could happen. Did you get that guy? I'd say probably not since I just got shot by somebody.
Hey, look, it's our gas station that that other team stole. Lol. Notice how the AI will actually take cover now. If they get seen, they will they will move. Bitch, you're not gonna We need to get out of the open. Too exposed here. How am I the only one alive here? Guys, I hope you all so much get up here. Get up here and cap this damn objective. I hear somebody behind me. Do it. Show yourself. <laughs> oh, shit! No! He had a friend! Dude, how have we not taken that object? I just killed... A lot of people. I just killed a lot of people. How have we not taken this objective yet? Come on. Alright, come on. All right, now everybody, everybody, come. All right, I'm making a squad. Come on, let's go. Let's do this. All right, is everybody? Okay, everybody come to me. Come on, let's do this for real. Let's just let's just uh rendezvous on this objective here. Those are my boys. 
All right, I have a plan on how to get this objective. We need to start. We need to start being more mindful with our um, with our lives because we only got forty tickets left. So schizoid, if you guys check your map, just get to me. All right, here we go. No, what well, are they? That's possible. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna flank around here. So, so come here, come here. Just fall back. I mean, zero. You can. I mean, you're kind of already engaged. But everybody who's just respawned, fall back to me. And we're gonna head around. Okay, come on, guys. You two with me. You two with me. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Never mind. I'm talking about someone else. All right, we're gonna cross back here, and we gotta get up to that apartment complex, and then we can actually. Yeah. All right. Here. Just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Cross. 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 Watch 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Watch 30 degrees. All right. See, we're already taking fire from over there. So careful. 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 And then we're gonna keep keep watching northeast. They're gonna be to the northeast. All right. Watch those. Watch those. Good kill. Good kill. That was that could have been bad. All right. Keep watching. Got a runner, runner, runner. He run, he ran, he ran. Did you get him? Good, 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 good. All right. So we got to get up inside this apartment complex here. They were up in these windows, although I wonder if they kind of came down here. All right. Push up with me. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Right in here, this stairwell, this stairwell. On the stairwell, here, 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 here. And then I'll show you guys what we need to do. Right here on the stairwell. Stairwell. Just 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 watch this whole stairwell right here. Let's go. Okay, then watch this. Watch this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head up here, we're gonna go out this this door, and we're gonna go along this this outside area the whole way around until we're in the capture area. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Go, 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 go. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me on this outside rampart. And then you're gonna prone here. Prone here, because they're gonna see you. Why is nobody following me? Did you guys get lost? You gotta go upstairs. Here we go. No, I'm friendly. Upstairs. Upstairs. Over here. This way. This way. This way. We're gonna move all the way up here 30 degrees. We're gonna prone right here. Prone here. Prone here. Prone here. And then we're gonna move this direction. Yeah, and then we're all going to set up here. All going to set up here. Is that a grenade? I heard somebody throw a grenade. All right, just set up. Watch watch north. Watch, just engage anything to the north. Kill anything to the north. Or in the stairwell as well. Endeavors. And then just, just camp that area and capture it. Tickets 26. We can do this. We can do this. I believe in us. I believe in us. I believe in us. Me. Just keep holding that objective. Yes, yes, yes. Keep doing this. Yeah, go through this stairwell, get upstairs, and then cross using this to safely move to the capture area. Alright, let's keep going. Right here, right here, right here. Yes, right here. Getting cap, throw grenades, throw smoke.
I would throw smoke on their position so they can't see us, and then they have to ex move out and expose. Oh fuck! See now that now they know what we're doing though. That's the problem with being a, a streamer playing a tactical game because it's so easy to stream snipe me. Come on, guys, we can capture this. I believe in us. Plans to implement anything other like that for more advanced movement. We kind of just did a pretty big advanced movement update. Have you considered putting a delay on your streams? I mean, yeah, but I like talking to my... I, I'm more interested in... Eventually, look, eventually we're going to get... We're going to get this game to a that point where I'm going to be very good at this game regardless of whether there's a stream delay or not. Because, like, when I played Project Reality, I, I had a strategy... Where it didn't matter if you were stream sniping or me or not, I was still gonna fucking win. In fact, I had a strategy where if you were stream sniping me, it meant that I was more likely to win. I can't even tell you what that strategy is. Um, but it basically, it requires construction. I need to have construction. Once I, once I know how this map ends. Bitch. Come on, let's capture this. Let's get this objective, guys. Go my route. I'm gonna I'm gonna clear this route out. And we just need to get on cap. Friendly, 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 friendly. Sorry, that's my bad. Oh, who, just, who just popped you? There's somebody over there. GG my ass. Oh, I just fucked up that grenade. Lol. Come on, no, we can do this. Come on, get on cap, guys. Hey, are you in that room? Anyone in that room? Alright, I'm gonna go spray. Bitch. <laughs> and of course that was the last ticket. Of course. Of course that was the last ticket. Big oof. Alright. Well, we're gonna move to uh to a chat session. And then we're gonna go from there. Alright. What's up everybody? Um first off, thank you so much for all of the donations. Jason, Bear, Phobia, Gideon. Lots of donations today. Much appreciate all of it. All of it goes towards the continuous betterment of our game and all of our other supporting projects like the uh, server that we're going to be putting out here soon. All right, sick. Um, so, yeah, let's talk. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, we can kind of go over the game. We can go over the project. Um let me see if I can find any. Got some some freaking background music here. Hold up. Where is it? I have some some music that I made for this. Although I don't know if it's gonna be even worth playing, but why not? Let's see. Let's see here. Directory. Boom. Might be a little bit too loud. Turn that down a lot. Alright, cool. 
So what's up, guys? Um, so this is going to be the new update that's coming out on December 20th. Um, this has been months of work. Uh, the game is by no means done, but this is going to facilitate a significant number of features that people have been asking for. And I think that not only is this going to continuously raise the quality bar of the game, and keep in mind, this is a free game. Um, so any the, the more that we make this game better, as a free game, it's going to raise the bar for every other game in the industry. In fact, we were talking about this the other day. I don't know. I don't think this is necessarily true. Um, but uh, when you look even at games like Insurgency Sandstorm, uh, and you look at games like Squat, and you look at a lot of these other projects, some of which are, are getting canceled and, and are just shutting down operations, or scaling back operations to such a significant degree that they might as well be shutting down, um, I, I would not be surprised if a lot of those executives and a lot of those investors who are trying to milk this industry of all of its money, I bet they're looking at projects like ours and maybe they're not making the decision to kind of like pull, to pack up shop because of us specifically. But I think that we are a excellent example of the tenacity and the power of the community especially in the tactical shooter community. You look at projects like Project Reality, all of these games now that are multi-million dollar games, all of them, Squad, Insurgency, Hell Let Loose, um, everything that I can think of, all started as a completely free modification made by people who did not give a shit about money. You look at Insurgency, it started as Insurgency Mod. In fact, Insurgency Mod is still a mod that you can play today. Um, it's a source mod. It's great. Project Reality is obviously still going strong. Uh, Project Reality is what Squad came from and Hell Let Loose. They both came from Project Reality. And our project, you know, while there's nothing wrong with big studios making money, you know, like, it's fine. You know, you got corporations out there that want to make money. Um, that's cool. Uh, but I think that we need to remind corporations and we need to remind people that there are communities out here that are not interested in the money. We don't care about the money. We don't care how many millions of dollars you want to suck out of this industry. We just want a good game. And we want a good game that does the things that we want. And, you know, again, a lot of these companies that are making these games, if you can make a good game, that does what our community wants, we're more than happy to support you. Um, but I think it gets, it gets, it becomes weird when you start having these corporations and they start putting in stuff into the game and they start making decisions that aren't based off of what the community wants. Like, let's seriously, let's look at Insurgency Sandstorm. Let's look at Squad. Um, who actually wants paid weapon skins? Nobody wants paid weapon skins. There, there are people who maybe want skins, but let's be honest. A weapon skin costs nothing to make. It's a texture file. In fact, the idea of selling weapon skins is so absolutely laughable. Laughable. Just from like a from a, a, a labor standpoint. That it would probably be easier for a lot of you all to make your own weapon skin. Paying five dollars for what is the equivalent of a texture material is is absolutely absurd. And when you look at a lot of these projects like Insurgency Sandstorm, and they put in all of these these microtransactions in order to support development, but then they don't continue developing the game. But then on top of that, they also aren't developing the parts of the game that need to be developed. You look at Insurgency Sandstorm, there are aspects of the modding SDK that are still broken. That there are same with Squat. There are aspects for of the modding SDK for Squat that are still broken. To this day, there are serious exploits, bugs, problems that they are not fixing, that they are not addressing, that they absolutely could. Um, but the reason they're not addressing those issues is because those issues don't make money. They just don't make money. Um, 
And all of these other things that they're putting all of this effort into creating, all of these microtransactions, all of these skins, all of these emotes, you know, it's it's the only reason they're implementing those things is to make money. And again, they might say, oh, but we're putting that in in order to develop the game. We're putting that in in order to help fund, you know, fixing of all of these other issues. Then why aren't you? Then why aren't you fixing the issues? Why aren't you implementing the features that our community wants? And why aren't you doing... I mean, again, with Squad, I would not be surprised if the next thing that Squad does is they start quoting they start cutting the modding SDK. Um, because one of the reasons that, in fact, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is true. Let me check. Um, is it even possible to play the, uh, did they update the Star Wars mod yet? Because I know it was broken. Galactic Contention. Is Galactic Contention playable again? Do we know? Well, anyways, um, there's lots of issues with a lot of these projects that are just not implementing the things that need to be implemented. They aren't maintaining the things that need to be maintained, and the community is suffering. And our objective is to create a project that basically forces all of these other studios in the, in the industry where it's like, look, either do what we want and make what we need. But or if you can't do that, we'll literally do it for you and we'll force you out of the industry by making the exact same thing that you were supposed to be making this entire time. Um, that's our objective. And I would say at this point, we're getting we're getting pretty dangerously close to achieving that dangerously. You know, I think we kind of started this project as kind of like a, you know, hey, do this or we're going to do it ourselves. And, you know, as you guys know, the, the main response to that was like, do it, pussy. <laughs> um, and then we did. And I, I feel like we're at this point where we're actually about to succeed. Um, so yeah, that's my little monologue. But let, let's go ahead and talk about OHD. I know a lot of people have questions. If anybody has any questions, if anybody has anything that they want to talk about, feel free to let me know now. Let's have that conversation. In fact, I can also go ahead and I can create. Let's let's do um let's do a Q and A. Um, ask fuck me anything about Operation Our Store Stop. And here's the thing, I expect a lot of people to ask the same exact question that I've been, because there's a lot of recurring questions where people just ask the same thing over and over again. But let's let's knock this out now. Let's knock this out now. So if anybody has any questions, go ahead and uh, click that little top chat, move it to Move it to questions. All right, here we go. Is the game good yet? I think it's much better than it was. Obviously, we have uh, we have way further to go. Um, but I, I I would say that this is going to be the next um. This is going to be the the next uh, the next big milestone to making this game be a true insurgency sandstorm and squad competitor. It's not all the way there yet, but it's getting really close. All right, let's see. Next one is this game. Uh, is this game? Is it likely this game will run well enough that you can get 50 FPS on a Steam Deck? Well, look, if you can get 50 FPS on a Steam Deck, you go hard, man. Uh, I do not see that happening, though. Um, and that's not what we're targeting. We're targeting traditional gaming PCs. We're not targeting Steam Decks. If you want to try it on a Steam Deck, sure, but that's that's not something we're targeting. I don't know why I can't scroll up on this. Do I plan on remaking Pactia? Uh, I don't think so. When are customizable more boy marauder asks when are customizable weapons coming uh again i've answered this multiple times but i'll answer it again in the official q a segment um that is going to come after vehicles 
after the medical system update and after the construction update. When those three things are done, we'll move on to weapon customization. What helicopters will be able to do besides delivering infantry? Uh, not sure. Again, squad got helicopters. We're, we're hoping to implement helicopters in our game, probably in a similar time frame uh, that squad did. Maybe go a little bit further. Um, I know that there's a lot of uh, possibilities with modifications. There's already people that have been experimenting with creating um, fixed wing aircraft. Um, and that's something that we actually also want to facilitate. So what we've already done is we've updated all of our maps to now have like airfields and everything. So that's going to be a great way for the community to start experimenting with fixed wing aircraft and helicopters. Now, now if you have a mod that adds in those things or adds in tanks or adds in APCs, you actually have a main base that you can start playing around with. Um, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, what's the situation on your legal troubles? I will have a very specific update. I will have a big update on that in the following days. Um, so here soon, there's going to be a big update on that. Um, we're just waiting for legal things to move through the process that they need to move through. Are there more theaters uh, planned in the future? Yes. Can you please show us the Vietnam content? Not for this live stream, but you'll, you'll be able to see more than enough of the Vietnam content. With OHD being a modding platform, is there anything pre preventing modders from possibly infringing copyright material? Uh, what do you mean? Hold up. Example like, man, I hate this stupid little heart button that YouTube has put. Uh, example like SM2. Um, so again, look, uh, we can't stop you from getting DMC yet. So if you look at the Galactic Contention mod for Squad, um, or if you look at a number of other modifications that have been created by fans for stuff that's obviously violating IP, you can get away with some things, but only at the discretion of that IP holder. So if you create a Star Wars mod for OHD and you don't get sued, that doesn't mean you're not infringing copyright. It just means that the copyright holder, for whatever reason, doesn't want to sue you. Now, we're not going to protect anybody from getting sued. If you decide to infringe on copyright and create a modification for OHD that is infringing some copyright, there's nothing I can do to protect you. Nothing. Um, in fact, I, I'm, it's kind of odd that... I don't know if anybody has any expectations for us to protect them from that, but that's not that's not possible. And you can sad face emote all you want, but like that's just the reality. I don't know why anybody would think that that's something that we can do. So when you make a mod, if you choose to go that route and you rip assets from other games and you get DMCA'd over it and you get sued for it, that is a that's something that you're gonna have. That is a path you got to walk alone. Um, we're more than happy to create our mod tools so anybody can use them for whatever they want. Um, but the consequences of doing anything illegal are, are yours. Um, is there a certain pace of the game that you were looking to define for the final product? Uh, slow like PR or faster like squad? Uh, I, I personally like Project Reality. I really enjoy Project Reality. I would like to have a similar experience to Project Reality. Um, we don't have to necessarily create the exact same experience that Project Reality creates for it to be fun for me. Um, but I would say Project Reality is the ultimate objective here. Um, there are some things that, again, you know, if you look at, say, if you look at Project Reality and you have Project Reality um, with with the uh, the deviation settings that they have or the the suppression settings, um, that's something that's kind of hard to do in Unreal Engine. Well, it's not hard to do; it's just hard to get away with because people hate it. But um, you know, for instance, the the weapon sway and the deviation mechanics that Project Reality has. Project Reality implemented a lot of the mechanics that they have uh, because of engine limitations, because they were on the Battlefield 2 engine. Like you couldn't have procedural weapon sway and a bunch of other stuff. Um, we can do that now in Unreal Engine. Um, we can have procedural weapon sway. In fact, we have it already. So when you play Unreal Engine, you start shooting. You know, you're gonna your gun's gonna start. You know, um, my objective is to create a similar experience to Project Reality, but do it without um, doing the kinds of things that squads had to do, where they just basically make you have an aneurysm every time you get shot at. Um, that's something I want to avoid. Uh, 
So that if, if that's as good of an answer as I can get. There's lots of ways that I think we can achieve that. Um, again, I think squad, pre the previous versions of squad were just fine. Um, I don't think there's necessarily any reason for them to have implemented ICO. Uh, I think that my, my biggest disagreement with squad and ICO is I feel like if they wanted to do ICO, they should have just done it as like an option where it's like if you wanted to have a server that had ICO enabled, then go for it. But to completely redo the game for that to be like the base experience across the board is um, ballsy, uh, but it's not what I would have done. I don't think it makes sense. Uh, what are your thoughts about cross-platform for OHD? Love to do it, but you know we need more money. As someone who loves Sandstorm and NWI, can you highlight some things OHD does that are comparable, similar to Sandstorm? Is there anything from Insurgency that inspired certain elements of OHD? I would say that Insurgency's gunplay and like just the way that the player controller works inspired a lot about Operation Harsh Doorstop. Like we wanted our gunplay to feel similar to Insurgency Sandstorm, but ultimately we want to have the um, we want to have the actual gameplay, like the meta gameplay, be more similar to Project Reality or Squad. So I would say right now, I mean, there's not really that much that's unique about Insurgency. Let's be real. Like, Insurgency is just a good tactical shooter. But when you really break it down, all of the game modes, like you've seen those game modes in other places. All of those weapons, you've seen those weapons in other places. All of the weapon customization, you've seen that in other places. Like, there's really nothing about Insurgency Sandstorm that I think makes it unique. The only thing about Insurgency Sandstorm that I think we really wanted to take inspiration from was just the player controller and the way the game felt uh i think they real whoever put that together i mean again there was a lot of people that were involved in insurgency sandstorm and i would say the people that actually created that player controller and had it feel the way that it does i, I doubt they're even there anymore so i don't want to like give credit to nwi for achieving that somebody achieved that i don't know who it is and i doubt nwi would publicly credit them um but but that's the main thing that we want to borrow from insurgency sandstorm but it that that is such a subjective meta thing that I, I feel like that's hard to even attribute to being insurgency sandstorm i think that's just it's just having a good weapon just a good player controller how do you plan to have your tactical shooter set itself apart from other tactical shooters okay so look again i know this is really hard for people to wrap their head around and every time i say this answer i think people get like offended or they think that this is a bad answer i do not think it's a bad answer okay I'm going to say this. It's always controversial when I say this, but I, I guess let me explain. Um, so again, he says, what do you want to do to set your tactical shooter apart from other tactical shooters other than it being free and moddable? Okay, here's the answer. Here's what I want to do with Operation Harsh Doorstop to make it different from all these other games. And that answer is, I don't. I don't want to. Um, and again, I know people get mad about that. And they're just like, what are you talking about? You have to do something with Operation Harsh Doorstop to make it unique and like different from everything else. I really don't. I don't. I, I, I think that's kind of the reason that I, I would actually say that us accepting that and us embracing that is ironically, it, it, that is ironically going to be the thing that sets us apart. All right. How many games have you guys seen nowadays where they're trying so hard to be different? that it just ruins the game. Like how many games have you seen where they just implement some ridiculous, entirely unnecessary mechanic for the sake of being different and then it just makes the game suck because they're just so obsessed with being different for the sake of being different. Like who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Like, and it's gonna get to this issue. Look, Insurgency Sandstorm's shutting down, right? Squad is owned by Tencent. Hell Let Loose just got traded off to uh, whatever the hell, to Team 17. And, and like all of these projects are getting shut down and are disappearing. Our objective is to make a game that does all of the things that these other games did well and put it out for free. So that way when all of these other projects implode and are gone forever or are run into the ground by these executives so much that then people are still going to have something that they can play because like seriously when it gets to this point when insurgency sandstorm hasn't been like updated properly and again you know it's funny i know that they made an announcement i know that saber and and saber 
with Embracer made an announcement and they're like, no, Insurgency Sandstorm isn't being shut down. Let me ask you this. What the hell have they done in the past couple of years? Because I know they're like, oh, you know, we've been continuously updating the game. With what? With what? I can't think of it. Like, like seriously, let me let me look. What have they added? This this ongoing work that they have allegedly done. I'm seeing nothing. I see double XP weekend, uh, quadruple hardcore weekend, Halloween weekend, triple XP weekend, vampire TDM, a team deathmatch where, where, where with vampire with undead. Like wh this is literally just run of the mill baseline bare minimum like staying relevant events that that they just add like i'm i'm going back here june 30th new time limited game modes okay so hardcore battle chad team six what what is chad team six what a what an embarrassing name attack and defend the line with slower movement and slower capture speed wow is that the fucking update is that continued development S like slower you put out an update where you dragged the movement bar a little bit to the left is that your fucking development team now like is that are, are we are we seriously trying to pass that off as active development for real like like, like I, I would keep going back here like what do we got you got a couple of fixes like i think the last update was april 20th have they added a single thing of substance? A single thing since April. Is this part of that time limited thing? Hold on, I'm scrolling up here. They added in patches. And, no, see, the only update since April is a fucking weapon skin update. Bunch of weapon skins. Yeah, I like how it says Operation Onslaught free update. And then, like, the next thing that it says is here's the new DLC. Yeah, so their free update. They added, what, one grenade launcher? A grenade launcher. And then just, like, for every single weapon they added in the game, there's, like, 20 skins. Like, 20. It's just, it's absurd. Um... Do you regret the name Operation Harsh Doorstop? Um, no, I don't. I, I think Operation... So here's the thing. I think Operation Harsh Doorstop is going to be a dope name when we make it a dope name. Look at Project Reality. Project Reality is a stupid-ass name. Uh, look at Ready or Not. Ready or Not is a stupid-ass name. I still remember when people... Squat. People complained about Squad... Operation Harsh Doorstop is long and unique enough where nobody has taken that domain and it's also significantly easier to copyright. So there's that. But in terms of like narrative and like storyline depth, I actually have plans to turn Operation Harsh Doorstop, like that specific name, like that operation, into um, a storyline and to, to have some kind of narrative depth. In fact, I, I kind of have plans to do what um i have plans to do what insurgency sandstorm decided to not at some point i am going to start playing around with having a, a storyline um some kind of i'm not going to go into detail about how it's going to work um but there trust me it and and when we launch that when we announce that it will it will make that name cool um because that's what makes things cool like harry potter Harry Potter is a dumbass name if there weren't, like, 40 fucking books and lore behind it, you know? Like, if, if that was literally something that people heard for the first time, Harry Potter, what the fuck name is that? Like, they don't they don't give a shit. Um, so a lot of this stuff... Now, if I had named the game Unicorn Fart Sprinkles, you know, that would, that would be a little bit harder to, like, pivot out of, you know? But, uh, but I don't think Operation Harsh Doorstop is, is necessarily a, a bad name. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end this, um, this Q&A because people are talking more in the live chat. End Q&A. But, hey, I love the fact that that's a feature on here now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, an actual playable Operation Harsh Doorstop map. Yeah. So, eventually, there will be... 
it'll it'll be I'm we'll we'll see we'll see what happens but I have I have dope ass points. Um, you would play Operation Fart Sprinkles. Oh hey, what's up, Control Pairs? Um, but by the way, so going on, so let me explain our objective again. Everybody's talking about what makes Operation Harsh Door Stop different. And again, I know this is a controversial answer. We have no intention to do anything different. Our objective is to create a tactical shooter that does all of the things that everybody knows it needs to be. That's it. That's it. Not, we don't we don't want to implement some weird try-hard feature that is trying to separate ourselves from everybody else that's going to ruin the gameplay. In fact, at this point, I think every single competitor of ours is going to destroy themselves so much with all of these paid weapon skins and all of this stuff that it might actually be that us being a completely vanilla tactical shooter that doesn't have all of that stuff might actually be the thing that sets us apart. You know, um, But that's our objective. But here's the thing. We do have plans to make unique content. We do have plans to make unique, interesting stuff that nobody else does. But when we do that, it's going to be a standalone game that isn't Operation Harsh Doorstop. Operation Harsh Doorstop is free. It's always going to be free, which means that I, I can't in invest millions of dollars into implementing like something that makes Operation... Like, if we were to put work into developing something that truly set Operation Harsh Doorstop apart and made it completely different, it wouldn't be a free game. Right, it would be a commercial title because we would have to put all of that work into making something. So again, our objective is to make Operation Harsh Doorstop the best vanilla, moddable tactical experience that exists on the goddamn planet. That's the objective. When we do decide to make really interesting, unique IP, it will be a standalone game with a commercial price tag. You possibly utilizing Operation Harsh Doorstop like underlying technology, you know, like the player controller and all the stuff that we've built, but it'll be a separate game. Operation Harsh Doorstop's objective is not to be different and interesting. Its objective is to just be the goddamn tactical shooter that we all know that we fucking want. No bullshit, no fancy gimmicky shit, just 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 the thing. And it's going to get to a point where if all of these studios and all of these other games keep going the way that they're going, we might end up being the only vanilla tactical shooter with without all of the other floofy crap that ruins the experience on the market. Which would be really ironic if that's what happens, but yeah. How long will that take to reach the goals? Uh, it depends on how much support we get. I would say right now we're probably... I would say we are currently a year to two years out to being on par with squat the way i the way i the way this works all right i i've said this from the beginning in the beginning i told you all that we would be a year out from being roughly equal to like uh like the first counter-strike you know um i mean again we're not creating like counter-strike um so it's not gonna have like all the arcadey movement but i was like all right we're about a year out from being like on par with like counter-strike's features and we did we achieved that so, you know, like, you got two teams, they kill each other, they capture control points, that's it. And then, after that, I was like, alright, we're gonna be about a year out from being on par with something like Insurgency Source. Now, we're not doing the weapon customization, um, so, you know, again, there's some mismatches with the comparisons here. But I would say, after a year, we got our game pretty close to Insurgency Source. Now... We're going to be where Insurgency Sandstorm is. This update is going to bring us closer to Insurgency Sandstorm. Two years after this is where... A year to two years. I would say we are now within 365 to 600 days away from being on par with Squad. And once we're on par with Squad, I think that's endgame for OHD. Like, that's when... It's over. Like we're and we're very close. We're we're a year or two, we are a year to two years away, depending on how much support we get, depending on how many donations, depending on the kinds of people that join the team. We are a year to two years away from finishing our 1.0 roadmap and achieving our goal to being on the same level as Squad when it comes to features and functionality. Now. Don't get me wrong, because some people are going to be like, does that mean you're putting an ICO? No, it doesn't. We're not putting an ICO. Um, we are going to be a fundamentally different game. So the one-to-one -one comparison is not going to be there. But we are going to be roughly in that area. When that is done, 
when we have achieved that, then everything from that point on for Operation Harsh Doorstop is just going to be cleanup and optimization. And just making the game just cleaner and better and also making it more friendly for modders. Um, and, and, and again, I would say that's a two-year window. Like all of that. Cleaning up, getting it to squads level, cleaning up a year to two. If you want to add in all of the polish and the optimization process and getting it like perfect, maybe after the third year, like one to two years to get all of the features and then maybe a year after that to just like perfect them all and like balance them perfectly and you know, whatever. Um, but I would say after we get to the point where we're on par with squad, that's when we're going to start making standalone commercial titles. So there will be an announcement at some point in the future where we're going to say, all right, um, Operation Harsh Doorstop, we've we've achieved everything that we set out to achieve. It's got vehicles, it's got construction, it's got weapon customization, it's got the it's got a medical system where you can revive players, it's got everything you need in addition to full mod support and all of that. That's done. And then we're gonna say now that that's done, we're going to officially announce a standalone $30 game. That is not going to be just another tactical shooter. It will be something substantially different. It will be something very unique, very original, for better or for worse. Because the funny thing is, is unique and original stuff does not necessarily make more money. But again, that's why I think we're always going to have Operation Harsh Doorstop. Operation Harsh Doorstop is like, all right, we know people want this. It's all this. It, but the problem with Operation Harsh Doorstop is there's nothing to stop anybody from copying us. Other than the people that took our fucking buildings and, like, straight up ripped our assets. That's a different story. But, like, in turn, if somebody were to start from the ground up and start making, like, the same weapons and, the, like, the same environments. Like, we can't copyright, you know, Iraq or, like, Afghanistan architecture. We can't copyright an HK or an M16. Like, we can't do that. So, Operation Harsh Doorstop will always be unsafe territory when it comes to monetization. Um... Because anybody can do it. Anybody. Um, but that's why it's free. That's why we made it free. Because uh, whatever. Um, but eventually, we're going to make a standalone IP that's going to be $30. It probably will not be as popular as Operation Harsh Doorstop. But it doesn't need to be as popular as Operation Harsh Doorstop. Because it's just going to be interesting supplementary income where we can just create really cool standalone projects. Kind of like what... um. What uh, what OWI did with Starship Troopers. I think Starship Troopers, as much as I have like drama with OWI, I think that Starship Troopers project was the smartest goddamn thing they could have done. I think Beyond the Wire and and Postscriptum were bad moves. I think Postscriptum is it's obvious why it was a bad move because Hell Let Loose came out literally like immediately after they did and just destroyed them uh because you can't copyright world war ii like i'm sorry everybody's gonna do world war ii but the starship troopers game like shit like that's that's copyrightable ip i i can't make a starship troopers game like i can't do that they they got that contract like that's you know i can i can sit here and remake squad from the ground up they can't stop me starship troopers though i can't that's that's all them smart play smart play um Eventually, we intend to do something similar, not Starship Troopers, uh, possibly not even sci-fi, but we're going to do something that is going to be very unique, and we're going to sell it. Um, and then that is going to not only help support our studio, uh, but also inadvertently probably also support Operation Harsh Shortstop as well. Auto-downloading mods will be coming in this update. Um, Prime asks, is your dev team all volunteer, or are they paid? Uh, yeah, they are all paid. Um, so our development team is paid. Uh, they are financed through the donations that we get. They are financed through, you know, my YouTube channel revenue or uh, sponsorship contracts and all sorts of other stuff. Um, but yes, they are all paid. Some of them work for incredibly reasonable rates um, because obviously, uh, you know, it's a it's a donator uh, funded project. Um, so some of them work very, very reasonable rates. Uh, but yeah, everybody, everybody has to be paid. There is no volunteer work within Operation Harsh Doorstop. Because if there was, that I think that would very much fun fundamentally destabilize, you know, how we operate.
Uh, Follow-up question, how can I contribute and support your development? Well, you can download the mod SDK. Um, you can do whatever you want with a modding SDK. Um, and with a modding SDK, I would say that's how the vast majority of people join the team. Make something dope in the SDK, prove to us that you know what you're doing, and if you do, then we're happy to bring you into the team. We bring a lot of people into the team and they work um, just making mods and helping us kind of like visualize what we want to do. But then when something actually needs to be done, that's when we put people on contract and then, you know, they officially make it. Um, so, yeah. Any documentation on mod tools? Well, I got to tell you, man, uh, our SDK is almost identical to 4.25 Unreal Engine. So I would say you have literally the entirety of the Unreal Engine 4 documentation slash tutorials on YouTube to learn how to use Unreal Engine. So it's, um, yeah. How many assets are included with the SDK? Uh, everything in the game. So, you know, the whole game. So, like, if there's a building in the game that you see or a weapon or a character, you can access it. So, yeah. That's how that other team ripped all of our assets and then put it in their game and sold it for $40, which is fucked, by the way. So you can't do that, but you can make whatever the hell you want. You know what's funny, though? If somebody had actually messaged me and said, hey, like, can we use our your assets in our game? I mean, I would probably say yes. Um, I mean, maybe not rip out our entire game and, like, import it. But if they were like, hey, can I use, like, this building? I really need it. I could be like, yeah, you know, make you, like, a one-time little license. Sure. Enjoy. You know, but... It's weird when people just straight up steal shit. Um, can the SDK change gameplay mechanics such as the ticket system? So you can change anything, dude. Anything. Everything. We are not like other studios. So other studios, they put out like half-assed SDKs that limit what you can do. We don't do that. We don't do that. You can. We, we put out an SDK that is an, as open as it can be. The only thing that you can't access for security purposes are the C++ scripts. Um, because SDK, just by default, do not allow those to be exposed because then you could like i don't know make a mod that's like a fucking key logger or like interfaces with your core system so there's some limitations there but we go very very far out of our way to make up for that by allowing you to modify anything um you can do any of the blueprint scripting that you want to do um and we're go we're going even further eventually our lead programmer wants to add in um a c sharp scripting layer so that way we can you can have c sharp scripting um but you know in a way that doesn't allow you to access stuff that would be a security threat will there be updated voiceovers for soldiers um yeah eventually we want to update the voiceovers for the soldiers but again right now they're good enough you know the voiceovers for the soldiers are are where they need to be um so yeah we have no bull pups in ohd that's a lie hold up warrior if you're there i swear to god didn't we create like a animation for bullpup weapons we, we we created like the aug right it's not like officially implemented yet but i swear to god we have like we do have support for the aug <laughs> blue drake the only thing keeping FPS games are not the only thing keeping FPS games relevant. All right, well, sick. Well, um, I think that's about it. Let me double check and see where we at are on time. I think it's been at least a couple of hours, two hours, I think. I don't want this live stream to drag on for in for eternity. Um, I'm happy I put in all of this effort into making my live stream experience even better um so that's nice um where is the delete that all right cool um yeah where are we at it been yeah it's been two hours all right guys um so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna wrap up uh but thank you guys so much for coming out again uh the update is launching on december 20th join the discord download the game on steam it's free uh if you want to support development feel free to donate 
Um, and trust me, this is only the beginning. We're going to be doing a lot more from here. Um, and I think it's going to get cooler and cooler as time goes on. So, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys next time. I might even do more live streams now that I have this dope ass, um, this dope system. Uh, so, yeah. All right, sick. No, the stream is not just starting. It's been almost two and a half hours. All right. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next one.